Have you ever wondered about the lives of the ancient Egyptian pharaohs and the secrets they held? One such mysterious figure is King Scorpion II, a king whose identity was hidden for centuries. He is a fascinating figure who has captured the imaginations of historians, and his life is a story worthy of being told. The identity of the Scorpion King has been a subject of debate among Egyptologists. In ancient artifacts, his name is often depicted next to a rosette or a yellow rose with six or seven leaves. This symbolism is common on objects belonging to high-ranking officials such as Kabasokar and Aakti. The cult of the scorpion, associated with the name Scorpion II, is often associated with the goddess Selkut. But some Egyptologists and linguists have argued that Selkut was not introduced until the Old Kingdom, much later than the pre-dynastic period. Therefore, they do not associate the scorpion cult of the pre-dynastic period with Selkut. Please hit the like button, share and subscribe to the channel. You'll never miss a video and help us deliver even more great content. Click that like button and sign up today. It is worth noting that when an animal is included in the name of a ruler, the creature often has a different political and cultural connotation. Therefore, it is not clear what the true meaning of Scorpion the second Sarek animal is. Therefore, scholars often refer to him simply as King Scorpion the second. King Scorpion II, lived during the early reign of ancient Egypt, which lasted from about 3200 BC to 3000 BC. This was a time of great political and cultural change, as the country was still in the process of unification and centralization of power. During this time, Egypt was divided into two main regions, Upper Egypt to the south and Lower Egypt to the north. Each region was ruled by a separate group of kings or rulers, and there were frequent conflicts between the two. King Scorpion II was born into a powerful family in Upper Egypt, which held many important cities and territories in the region. At that time, Upper Egypt was going through a period of rapid growth and development. The Nile River flowing through this area provided a reliable source of water and food, allowing the population to grow rapidly. As a result, the region became increasingly rich and powerful, with rulers amassing vast amounts of wealth and resources. Artifacts with relief ornamentation and ceramic signs made of black ink show the greatness of the commercial economy during the reign of the Scorpion King. It is amazing to see that hieroglyphs for Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt were first used, gradually bringing together the two divided parts of Egypt. Descriptions of hunters, Libyans, and Narmer palettes show natural details of rivers, plants, trees, and animals, including human figures engaged in agricultural work. Scholars suggest that the kings may have controlled irrigation to maintain their power and wealth. However, despite this wealth and power, Upper Egypt remained somewhat isolated from the rest of the world. There were few trade routes or connections between Upper and Lower Egypt, and the two regions often clashed with each other. Religion and mythology were also an integral part of the cultural development of the Age of Scorpio II. Artifacts depict many standards and sects, revealing a complex belief system. The earliest recognized deities, including Horus, Seth, Min, Nemti, Nekbet, Bat, and Weepvavit, had no known centers of worship or temples at this time. Mythical creatures, such as the Serpipod and the Winged Chimera, were common motifs in the art of this period. The Serpipod, described as the one who moves the sun, appears on the Narmer palette and is said to be under the control of the king. Winged birds, representing chaos and violence, appear on the two dogs' palette and other artifacts. These motifs, as well as depictions of warriors battling lions and giraffes, are thought to have originated in Mesopotamia. The exchange of culture and influence between these regions highlights the interconnectedness of ancient civilizations. During the reign of King Scorpion II and his immediate successors, Mesopotamian culture and religion had a clear and far-reaching influence on the early Egyptians. One of the most important signs of Mesopotamian influence is the tomb architecture found at burial sites such as Minshat Abu Omar, Hierakonpolis and Nakyata. The tombs found at these sites clearly show architectural methods that were copied from Mesopotamian buildings. It is not entirely clear why the ancient Egyptians were so deeply influenced by Mesopotamian culture and religion. Some proponents of the racial theory believe that the first chieftains and rulers of Egypt were of Mesopotamian descent. 
But some claim the African origin of the ancient Egyptians and their civilization was an indigenous development in the Nile Valley. Under the rule of King Scorpion II and his direct successors, Mesopotamia's influence seemed to wane and Egypt began to cultivate its own independent culture. King Scorpion II's rise to power was marked by a series of decisive military victories and strategic alliances. The family power base in Upper Egypt gave him a significant advantage over his rivals. One of his most notable military victories was to successfully defeat the forces of Lower Egypt and secure his control over the entire region. This victory was a major turning point in his career, as it allowed him to consolidate power and establish himself as one of the most powerful rulers in Egypt. He also formed a number of strategic alliances with neighboring kingdoms and cities, helping to strengthen his position and expand his influence. In addition, King Scorpion II built strong relationships with the rulers of other important cities and territories in Upper Egypt, including Hierakonpolis and Nakiata. He also built a strong relationship with the powerful god Horus, who was widely worshipped throughout ancient Egypt and believed to be a symbol of divine kingship. These strategic alliances and military victories helped him expand his territory, secure access to valuable resources, and build a reputation as a skilled and capable leader. The legacy of King Scorpion II remains a subject that continues to fascinate historians. Despite the millennia that have passed, his reign remains a mystery. The Scorpion Mace is the only known visual evidence of his existence archaeologists Quibble and Green discovered the artifact in 1897. The Scorpion Mace depicts a single large figure, believed to be King Scorpion II, wearing the white crown of Upper Egypt. He holds a hoe, which may symbolize the pharaoh cutting the first bed or opening the dike to flood the fields. The form and position of the figures are similar to those on the Narmer palette, where the pharaoh Narmer is depicted. The scorpion mace also depicts servants throwing seeds, which strengthens the interpretation of the sowing ritual, possibly related to the said festival or the founding ceremony. The festive parade on the scorpion mace is depicted looking in the opposite direction of the king and meeting in the center of the scene. At this center, scholars believe they see some small traces of the feet and coils of the red crown. These traces support the belief that the scene on the scorpion's mace once contained an image depicting the second figure of the red-crowned king of Lower Egypt. Finally, the scorpion mace head also displays a row of divine standards, each of which is about to be surpassed by a god or trophy badge. Half hang penguins, while the other half hang hunting bows. These propellers represent the people of Lower Egypt, while the bows represent the archer nation, referring to the hostile Asian tribes. Scholars interpret this as evidence that King Scorpion II began attacking Lower Egypt and its enemies on the border. This eventually led to Narmer's victory in the unification of Egypt. Stone and clay vases with royal Sarek embroidery on their bellies have been found at Tarhan and Minshat Abu Omar. Some Egyptologists believe that the Sarek represents a stylized scorpion. Moving to the second waterfall of the Nile, a large rock was discovered with an astonishing depiction of the victory of King Scorpio II. The scorpion is shown striding over slain enemies who are upside down and hit with arrows. Two other characters are holding bows and shooting at defeated enemies, believed to be Nubians. This is based on the presence of ostrich feathers and bows, attributes typically used by the Egyptians to mark the Nubians. Interestingly, the scorpion has a human face with an artificial beard and a ceremonial knife at the waist, holding a long rope to tie the captured Nubians to it. This entire scene is said to represent King Scorpion II's victory over the hostile Nubians, making it an important historical event that sheds light on the power dynamics of the time. The final resting place of King Scorpion II remains a mystery, with two tombs considered as potential candidates. The first tomb, called Tomb B-50, is located at Umm el Kab near Abydos. It was a square room divided into four parts by a simple cross-shaped mud wall. The second tomb, located at Hierakonpolis, is 2.5 meters deep, reinforced with mud. Notably, a scorpion statue was discovered in this tomb. Despite these potential options, the exact burial place of Scorpion II has yet to be confirmed. Despite its many achievements, however, the legacy of King Scorpion II is also marked by a certain degree of controversy. 
Some historians have questioned the accuracy of the historical record, and there is some debate about the actual extent of his achievements. However, his impact on Egyptian history and culture is undeniable, and his reign remains an important chapter in the story of one of the oldest and most fascinating civilizations in the world gender. Please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for your support and I can't wait to see you in the upcoming videos.